What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. We are in the car right now. I have my special guest back with me today again, my husband Jared, and we also have Max, who looks hilarious right now. He's just looking out the window, enjoying the sunny drive. We are going to do a little bit of a mukbang for you guys today. We are going to Wendy's right now. We got some coupons. We're gonna get some lunch and we're gonna answer a bunch of questions that you guys have sent through on Instagram. If you do not follow me on Instagram, you can head over there. It's at Beth Grace Moore and you can send in questions and things like that whenever there's opportunity to do that. And so we're going to get some food, answer a bunch of those for you guys and see how many we get through because there was a bunch that came in and they were all super, super good. That mukbang is a weird word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of the first questions that I got was, what is a mukbang? Let's just answer that now. Yeah. The formal definition, I think, and I don't know how, <laughs> excuse me, sir. I don't know how like formal you can make this because it's, I think it's a fairly new thing, but basically it's like an internet phenomenon that started in Asia and it's honestly just sitting in front of a camera and eating large quantities of food while you answer questions that's literally all that it is i don't know who first originated it but it's kind of a fun concept and i feel like it's a fun thing to do on like a date night in lockdown or whatever just like get a bunch of food ask each other questions and see where it goes so we're gonna do that now see where it goes <laughs> i'm just gonna see where it goes um, all right what do we got oh i also want a spicy chicken combo fine we'll get the two dave singles is that a big enough burger for you? No. Is spicy chicken bigger? No. Okay, well, aren't you also going to get a Frosty? Yeah, and JBC. <laughs> you see your cheeseburgers coming? <laughs> All right, what did we get? You got your Dave got single cheeseburger. A cheeseburger? I feel like 50% of the videos I'm in are just eating, <laughs> eating? in cars. <laughs> That's only one other video. But hey, the people- I have only been in four, maybe five. I That's feel like you've been in more than that. I don't know, I can't keep track now. And then we also got french fries and frosties. Okay, this Look is- Look how small this lettuce is. <laughs> Show me. Look at this tiny piece of lettuce. What the heck? Max is like, that's a perfect size for me. All right, this is, this is a good question because I don't know what your answer to it would be. Okay. Will you watch the entire birthing process? Nope. Nope. What's, what's your plan? Uh, I don't know what my plan is, but I definitely won't watch. You mean like from the other end? I just think that it we messes you up. Jesus, thank you for this food. I pray that you bless it to our body. I love you. Um, pray that we would drive safe today. Uh, in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. <laughs> mm -mm. I won't watch it all. Because, but you would watch some. Like if they, if they were like the head is coming out, would you go look, or would you be like, I'm just gonna chill up here? I might watch for the head, and I would quickly look away when the rest of it slides out and all the other stuff slides out. <laughs> I don't think I want to see that and have that like burn into my memory. <laughs> and so to see that our baby's head come out could be cool, but even that I'm kind of indifferent on. Um, I definitely don't want to see everything like. Whoosh, fall out. Is that the sound it's gonna make, you think? I toned the sound I was gonna make <laughs> down for YouTube. Okay, this is a good one, because this has been a question that's been a debate in our household for the last couple days, and someone that we brought into it actually asked the question over here. Who would win in a fight, a grizzly bear or a silverback gorilla? I got this from a YouTuber that I watch, and, um, and I don't know. I would lean towards gorilla, because they're smarter, and they're stronger. I put Although my grizzly money on bears the grizzly bigger. bear because the grizzly bear has more height and the grizzly bear, I actually looked this up, has like 400 pounds on the gorilla. So if that height and weight comes down on you, sure the gorilla can like throw a punch, but if the bear has you down, like mm -hmm. between the claws mm -hmm. and the teeth, I feel like that gorilla's done. And gorillas are stronger, they'll push it off. I don't know. They, I don't know man. I, somebody tried to argue the point that bears could climb better. <laughs> like. Where are they climbing in a fight? Also, they can't climb better than a gorilla. There's no way. That's still up for debate. Write yeah. it in the comments what you think, a grizzly bear or a gorilla. Yes, put, put in the comments who you think would win the fight, grizzly bear or a gorilla. We wanna know what you guys think. How would you say we deal with disagreements and arguments? I feel like very differently. My 
My thing. Are my sunglasses making me too impersonal on the screen? No, you're fine. You can take You need off, to see though. people's eyes. <laughs> Now you can believe me and trust me more. <laughs> when it comes to arguments, we deal with them differently, but we've definitely like gotten better with that in marriage. I am more so the type of person that has to like think through things and like take time to process. And in the moment when something is like really heated, I find that super hard to do. And so I will often feel like, oh, I need to like take a break from this and come back to it. But Jared will like, not fight to the death. That's like so aggressive. <laughs> Onions are so dangly. <laughs> dangly, I can't. <laughs> anyway, what was I saying? I feel like I need more time to process things, whereas Jared could just like in the moment, like kind of finish a fight. But I feel like we found more balance in that where we're not just like arguing for the sake of arguing and not getting anywhere versus me feeling like I need to like back out all the time to take time to process. So. Mm. I don't know. What I don't do you like. Think? I don't like leaving things unresolved. Mm -hmm. I would rather push for a resolution, even if that means me apologizing. I right. want to get there. I don't want to sit in weird tension. You be upset, and then we sleep on it. And I'll, I hate going to bed right. angry. Right, and I would say that we don't let like that much time go by. Like we. Yeah, usually... but sometimes you're like, oh, we'll just go to bed. We'll talk about it in the morning. Like I don't freaking want to talk about it in the morning. It'll literally be like 3 a.m. and Jared's like, we're finishing. I want to deal with I'm it. I'm like dying, falling asleep. I want to figure it out. And sometimes you're right to do that, but on the whole, I'm like, I just want to get to the bottom of this so we don't have to fight anymore. It usually goes like this: we disagree about something. I tell Beth all the reasons that she's wrong. She pushes back and I undermine those arguments. And then she I feel apologizes. Like I'm winning fights though because I'm more like convincing yeah. than No, you. but you have to think. Yeah, you're more convincing, but I've learned that tactic and now I'm like, <laughs> you're wrong. Um, and then I've got more energy for the fights. So then I usually win in the moments and then she apologizes and then I'm like, Oh man, I'm a donkey. And then I like, <laughs> donkey. I apologize and I go back and I validate all of the things that she said. And then I I apologize and we hit like a middle ground. That's like, that's how they typically go. I'm realizing like where I'm trying to grow is I'm trying to realize sooner that I can't just like stomp over her arguments and I need to right. see how because important Because I'm being quiet and trying to think mm -hmm. through what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. This sounds so spiritual, but I try and like pray while we're fighting because sometimes I just see get so- See the kind so... of high road she takes in this okay, conversation? Okay, whatever. Sorry, Jared, I need you to stop yelling because I'm trying to pray for what <laughs> you're saying I'm trying to invite right the Holy Spirit into I'm this moment. I'm just trying to have a three-person conversation. <laughs> I'm trying to see what the Holy Spirit's saying on what you're saying. I try and pray because I find that I am, like I can get so, so angry that I like just cannot continue to speak. And so like in my mm. head, I'm literally like, like, I need to just like invite God into this. And the most important thing is to like actually talk. Like don't just like not fight for the sake of not fighting or be like, oh yeah, like we don't really fight. We don't have arguments. And it's like, okay, well, are you getting upset about things in the relationship? And then just like brushing it under the rug. So yeah. there's an element of like- Cause having... silence is also a form of manipulation. Yeah. You, can't, you can't play like that. So there's nothing wrong with like having those hard conversations. We got we have so many more like, questions. We yeah, roll. we need to go faster so this doesn't. Dream bacon a cheeseburgers are the best thing that you can get at Wendy's. We actually had a couple of people ask us for a funny story from our honeymoon, and I have one that I will share, which is more on like the personal side. But so the first week that we got there, we had been traveling for so long and we ended up getting to this like um, little villa that was on an island that we had for the week and we were like so exhausted. And I remember we were like falling asleep at the table as we were eating, but we went back to the hotel room afterwards and I had never worn lingerie before. Like I just never had a reason to in my life. And I'm like already so tired. But I go into the bathroom and Jared is kind of like out in like the bedroom area of this villa that we're staying in. And I brought like all my stuff with me that I was like planning on putting on to like kind of come out and be like, oh, this is so fun. Like <laughs> we're on our honeymoon. But I go into the bathroom and I don't know how long I was. It was probably at least 45 minutes to an hour. I couldn't figure out how to get it on. <laughs> did not know how to get the thing on. And I came back out into the room and had to get him to help me put it on, which I feel like kind of killed it a little bit, but. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> That's my funny honeymoon story for you guys.
What are a few quick tips that you have for someone to grow their relationship with Jesus? Uh, you got to take time. It takes time to grow your relationship with God. Time and intentionality. Don't just go through the motions of a relationship with God. Read your Bible um, and ask God to show you something new in it. Pray and actually talk to God, not just like some kind of like prayer you heard growing up, like God is good, God mm -hmm. is great, whatever, whatever, but just like actually speak out your mind and your heart and your thoughts to God, recognizing that He's there with you. Um, sit quietly, and this is really hard, but sit quietly and listen to what God has to say to you. Um, and then do all of this stuff, not to check a box, but like out of a, a desire and an emotion to get close to God and ask God to help you get close to Him. He'll give you the things that you ask for if they're the right things. Hmm. And asking to have a deeper relation with him is the right thing. Yeah. And and do it for a long time. Like you can do all that stuff for like three weeks and then be like, why am I don't feel like I'm closer? One, you will feel like you're closer. But two, sometimes you gotta do it for years. There are like years in my life where I feel like, man, I feel like I'm distant from God, but I'm doing all the right things. Um and then something will change. My quick answer to this is to get yourself into a good community. I think a lot of people don't know where to go or what their next steps are when it comes to growing a relationship with Jesus, but it's so much easier and better to do that in community than it is to do it in isolation. Mm -hmm. So if you're not plugged into a good church, like make that your first step. It's just like even asking around, like what are good churches in my area? Um, where are places that I can get plugged in? And then when you get there, actually plug in don't just like kind of come in on a sunday and then actually just like leave without doing anything to to take the next step there so get plugged in get good people around you that can be encouraging you and cheering you on in it and that will totally change the game for you what is a pet peeve that you have in me why is this so empty did this dump out in the bag no i don't know <laughs> you gonna look no did you eat that entire jbc in the time that we were talking wow yep. Max just burped. <laughs> All right, what is a pet peeve that um, you have of me? Of you? Yeah. Um. Let's see how fast he answers this. I don't know. The fact that you always want to choose the movies and then you fall asleep like 30 seconds in and then I have to watch the rest of it. This is facts. I can't stand that. <laughs> at all and <laughs> okay <laughs> and the fact that you don't even really like movies that is a like probably the biggest pressure it's not that i don't like movies I my attention movies. span is just so short well then my pet peeve is that your attention span is short <laughs> like that's why tiktok is good for me because it's like 60 seconds and i'm out my pet peeve of you do you know what it is no um, no <laughs> it's that jared sometimes will <laughs> start a task and then only do it like 50% of the way or sometimes literally like 75% of the way like he'll finish it so close to being done and then just not fully finish the task so then I have to go back and actually still complete it anyway which goes yeah. against the whole point of like him even doing it I run out of energy like dishes cleaning laundry like you'll you'll contribute but then you're just like you tap out after a certain point in time yeah it's really nice I'm working on it Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to dip a fry in it. It's kind of melty. We're also parked in a sketchy spot right now, and I'm nervous someone's going to have us move. Um, <laughs> that was really excessive. Um, how did we know we were ready to grow our family? Mm, I didn't. <laughs> but mostly because I was, like, freaked out. And then slowly... I knew I always wanted to be a dad, but I never really wanted like kids really bad. I was like, oh, I want kids. Like, I was just like, I'm gonna be a dad, I'm gonna have kids. But then when push came to shove, I was like, oh, I'm not ready for this. I have so much I need to change in myself. I think that was what I was more hesitant about. Right. Do you but, feel like now that you feel more ready? Like now that we're closer? Mm, yeah. Totally, yeah. But you wanted it really bad and I just trusted yeah. that you wanting it was like, and me being kind of like, eh, okay. Yeah. We are just like, cool. I feel like I, I, the summer before, had started to pray into it and felt like it was going to happen in the next year, but was really struggling with that at that point because I was like so scared of it and felt like I'm still too selfish for this. Like I can't do this. But then it was over like the next few months and into the spring before we found out that we got pregnant that the desire in me really, really grew. You also had to work through some stuff like when it yeah. came to like pregnancy. I had stuff. to like really surrender it to God because like, I mean, long story short, we didn't know if there would be 
any like fertility issues because I have endometriosis and so it took a lot of like submitting that to God and just surrendering the timing to him and it was funny because like I actually have a journal entry and I like was just like praying to God like to to either like take this desire away or help me just to have faith whatever else and I just felt like there was a, there's a verse in, in scripture i don't know where it is but it actually says like have courage daughter and i read that verse like right after i wrote that kind of in my journal entry and then i think we conceived her the next day like it was literally the next day and then i found out that i was pregnant a few weeks after that so yeah the timing of it was crazy i feel like that is more so what allows me to feel ready than anything else because in my own strength no i would say i don't feel ready i don't know if i ever would because it's such a huge life transition but because like def we defied the odds fertility wise and i feel peace about it from like a, a god sense that's what allows me to be like okay we're gonna be fine hey what this you is so interesting if you had a parent trap couple edition situation, which couple shoes would you jump into? I don't know. If we had to be another couple for a day. Um, hmm. Who has that? Barack and Melania Trump. <laughs> oh, no. That's not good. I meant to say wow. Michelle and Barack Obama. That would be a really weird relationship. Justin Bieber. Oh yeah, Justin and Haley Bieber. There we go. That's, that's a safe that's one. That's what I do. He's that's just up the road. One. Yeah. How do we keep our relationship spicy? I mean, sex. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta put effort and energy into it. Yeah. Like. That would probably be my answer too. In every way, shape, and form. Like you've gotta plan it. You got to stick to the plan. You got to work to make it spontaneous. Like all this stuff is natural at the start. And then you get into the rhythm of life and you get busy and stuff starts happening. And uh, like just, I don't know, it changes. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to, not even for a bad way, it just changes from that like, I want to do it all the time, every minute, all the time. And it's like, you got to be more thoughtful about it and more intentional and Mm -hmm. Plan it out a little bit more and it's like being intentional with it in the same way that you'd be intentional with everything else Like you can't just assume I think that like a, a really great sex life just kind of like happens I feel like that's a really easy way to become dissatisfied with your sex life if you're putting that expectation on it And it's not actually going that way. Keep and this is for like the day in and day out mm -hmm. Like if you go on a vacation Usually just yeah. like spicier than anyways because it's just like a fun time. It's intentional But this is like a routine of life like yeah. week in week out nothing's changing you're in lockdown You're just going to your work yeah. like whatever another question that somebody asked that ties back to this is how has Intimacy changed for us with pregnancy. And I feel like that one is interesting because it's been very different like per trimester even like in first trimester I was so so sick that I feel like that had an impact on like my like desire to do things but then second trimester it was like a switch just flipped and i was like let's go like this is great i want it more and then even into first, third trimester i would say that that carried a little bit but then you also just get the complications of like like you're sore at night and like you're it's having bigger. to now navigate this like huge pregnant belly which is so different too <laughs> navigate so. it like <laughs> weaving yeah. around it dodging it it just it just becomes different but i think that that's the fun thing about like sex in marriage over time is like you just navigate the differences in different seasons yeah. and i didn't expect it to get better like in second and third trimester but it was great been mm -hmm. riding that wave did you find that our social circle changed when we got engaged and married hmm it's a good question that's a good question. It's hard for us to answer because we changed churches hmm. during our engagement. Yeah. So that had more to do with our social circle than the state right. of life we were in. Granted, I'm still friends with all of the people that I was friends with at my old church. We just hang out with them less. Yeah. Um, just a proximity thing. So it's, it's hard for us to have a fair answer in that. The changing of like churches was a bigger deal with our community in that sense. But I like still stayed close to all my like... Mm -hmm. friends that weren't in the same stage of life like my single friends and my dating friends and stuff yeah but at the same time it does practically like make it different because for like I've, I've got a really close friend now who is single we just started dating somebody but has been single and for him and me to hang out 
it's just like another day in the life for him and for me it's like i'm intentionally like leaving to go right. and hang out with him yeah and so we just have different perspectives on it mm -hmm. and so again it doesn't really cause tension it's just like our life doesn't overlap all the time like it would have if i was single yeah it just naturally changes because it's easier almost to hang out with couple friends when you get married and we have a lot of those so like if we wanted to only do that we could but there is something to be said too about like those friendships that you had beforehand that like for me i think of my roommates that i went to university with like i love those girls and like having conversations with them and still being intentional with them is something that i think is really important to all of us and was from the moment that like i got married and no one else was married yet but then each one of them got engaged over time and now we're all married but if I had kind of just backed away because they weren't married yet and like they weren't in the same season of life as me I would have lost out on like the beauty of all those friendships that still exist now so yeah you just have to be intentional with it I think and make the time and like have those conversations with your your spouse too or like the person you're engaged to about like hey this is an important relationship to me and I think that you should just like be honoring that in each other all right this one is a good one because we have a good answer to it and a cute little story. What is our favorite Bible verse? Like each of us. Mm. Uh, mine is Psalm 46, I think six. When nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall, he lifts his voice, the earth melts. Yeah. And I think for me, that is just the one that I go back to because it's this idea that like everything could be crazy. And it's talking about like nations are in uproar. Like that's a, nations is big. That's a yeah. lot. Um, kingdoms. Uh, fall like all of this different like imagery of like craziness that's going on and if God just is to speak the whole world is just gonna melt at his voice and that mm -hmm. gives me like a peace <laughs> so oftentimes I can get anxious about things and like oh man there's so much going on but just to know that man if God were just to lift his voice in a situation everything would just like melt away and that that brings me peace yeah because that's where I find a lot of rest is in my relationship with God so Preach. that's a big one for me yeah my favorite bible verse when we started dating and it had it had been for a few years before that i don't know if it's still like my favorite one to this day but I, it's psalm 46 5. so it was the verse directly before jared's and it's god is within her she will not fall god will help her at break of day and i remember like when we first like exchanged verses i was like mine's psalm 46 5 and he's like mine's psalm 46 6. and we were like oh my gosh so crazy crazy times next question is do we tithe yes yeah we tithe um, what is tithe for people that may not know that tithe is this principle in scripture of giving um a tenth back to uh your church and so basically it can be a tenth it can be like it's it's typically like understood as tenth is sort of the minimum a um, tenth of you said your finances your right? finances yeah. yeah all money yeah. that you make yeah and so um and basically I don't know like we can talk like in depth about it it's a it's a big thing to talk about mm -hmm. like there's a lot of like love that you can go into high level. but on a high level that's what it is that's what it means and the gist of it is that like everything that we have god has given to us and so um the practice of tithing on a personal level it helps us remember the fact that um uh, pastor brand actually had a great message on this this week mm -hmm. where it's like um things that were created shouldn't have ownership of the thing that created them right yeah. and so like for us like god created us and so he dictates a lot of like what we do and we shouldn't be asking god or telling god how the world works he created the world and as people we created money as a way to barter and money often tells us how we should be we're controlled by that thing as opposed to dictating how that thing should work out in our life and so right um tithing on a personal level it helps you work out like understanding of uh, not being controlled by money and um and then our practical level should be being obedient to what god's asked you to do and uh, and it helps you like i think i think on a on a practical level though tithing allows you to do the greatest impact in your city that you can with mm. your money by giving to uh, the churches, giving to the churches yeah. because the maximization of that is just like it's insane uh, versus a lot of other organizations and i right. wondered about that until i actually started working for a church um, which i do now and a, it's a healthy church too so you know yeah that, it's a healthy church yeah. yeah that's another thing to be like wary of and so and just to see the way that that works um in terms of what we give to and the way that, that works out in our city to reach people with the good news of jesus but also to um help bring the kingdom of heaven here and mend a lot of the situations that we see it's really just it's cool i could never figure that out myself with my money so just giving my finances to the church and seeing what god will do through that 
uh because it really does multiply their impact than if i just took that money and did something like yeah. random with it yeah and so it's a it's an important principle that a lot of christians are not like yeah. uh living by right now and yeah. i think everybody needs the to, bible uh, talks about money so much too like yeah, of all the things that it talks about like i mean we were even talking about it in church this week how it talks about like prayer 500 times and faith 500 times but it talks about finances and money like 2,000 times and it's not because um of the fact that god's obsessed with money it's because we're obsessed with money and so god knew that that was something he would have to speak to and so um yeah i mean we just know like because of the fact that like jesus died for us like mm -hmm. he freely gave to us and so the reaction that we take in response of that is to freely give back to him what like actually belongs to him and if we think about like the 100 percent of the income that we get if we actually believe that all of that 100 percent came from god like why do we have such a hard time letting go of that 10 percent when he still allows us to hold on to the 90 that we shouldn't have anyway so we're of the mindset of like we like we get to tithe but it's also like we would never not tithe like it's just kind of part of our rhythm in our marriage and as a couple and then being generous in general is something that's important to us too so we even just have like a line in our budget to be generous throughout the month whether that's like getting coffee for friends or dropping off food or having people over or flowers or whatever and that has been i think a really like good and integral part of our marriage like we're in a finance series right now as a church um, and so there's some great teaching on the that. name of our church. Slay church. Slay church. Um, and you go to slaychurch.com and there's just a lot of great messages on it there. And then also, um, if you ever wanted to talk more about it, like you can always message Beth or myself and we could chat more. This next one kind of ties into that since you were just preaching there. What's your favorite thing about married to being married to a pastor? If you didn't know, Jared is a pastor at our church. And so, yeah. I have married a pastor, which is a fun thing, but I think like we very much see it as like something we do together. We have never really seen it as like Jared's the pastor and I'm just like the pastor's wife. It's kind of like something that our family does. And I think because of that perspective, my favorite thing is honestly that like our kids will get to grow up in that yeah. culture. Cause I think it's such like a grounding thing for them to know that like our whole family is in this together. Like we, we do church together. We like pour into people, we invest into people yeah. together. We love our community and like we're gonna get to do that as a family unit it's not just like oh I'm at home and I'm like with the kids all the time and Jared is this like crazy guy on a pedestal that sets all these high expectations for us it's like no we actually do this as a family and I think that our kids are really gonna benefit from that growing up so I would say that's my favorite thing do you have any tips on how to grow alongside your spouse as they grow into all that God has called them to be yeah I think like in my brain, this is kind of twofold. You need to keep growing as an individual and just like keep working on what God is doing in you and just growing as a person. And then you also need to encourage and facilitate as much as you can the growth in your uh, spouse. Like if they have a passion, don't make fun of that passion. Don't step mm -hmm. on that passion. Don't uh, like have them question it. Is this just something I like doing or is this something that I feel like uh, God has gifted me in and graced me for? Mm -hmm. And then encourage that in them. Like even yeah. with YouTube and stuff like that. Yeah. I think there was a long time that I was like, is this really like the right thing for you to do? And then as I saw just more and more of your passions come out, I was like, oh, this is a no brainer. And even though I'm not like the most, like I don't really use Instagram that much. I don't use social media that not much. not really a social media guy. No, but um, but I was like, this is obviously something that you love and that you're good at and that I feel like God's graced you for So I'm just gonna encourage the crap out of that and then you like learn to love that thing alongside them But you gotta you gotta put effort in and take an interest in it But on a personal level if you don't want to get outpaced by your partner, then you got to keep growing Like yeah, I heard it said uh, and there's so many analogies and some of them are good and some of them are but um, there's this idea of like uh, Like a triangle and then you've got like yourself like Beth, me, and then God, and the closer that we work towards God, the closer that we'll get together, and that's one that I often think about. Mm -hmm. And the other thing too is just like uh, this idea of, especially when you're dating, but I think it applies to when you're married. It's just like run as fast as you can towards what God's called you to, and yeah. then like whoever just keeps up with you, marry that person. Yeah. And then same in your in your marriage is just like keep moving at a, at a fast pace, and don't ever let your partner slow you down in that. 
But yeah. then also don't just like blow past them and, and be like, hey, like if right. there's an area that you're struggling in or you're in a season where it's really tough, like we've gone back and forth with this, then we just yeah. help each other like through that. Yeah, and I think there's a lot to be said too about like the friendship element of like when you, like if you think of like growth as a ladder, because that's just an easy example for us to picture. Like if you're climbing up that ladder and then you see your spouse is still like a couple of rungs behind, like you actually want to reach down and help them back up. Like you're not, it's not a competition. You're actually there to support and encourage each other. And like as you both get better like your marriage gets better over time as yeah. well and so yeah i feel like just supporting each other through it cheering each other on that's like the biggest things you find that vulnerability on a public platform is easier or harder why or why not interesting question mm. that's a really good question um mm. i don't personally feel like it's easier or harder in either format per se mm. and i think that's just because i try and be the same person all the time <laughs> i like try very intentionally to not be something different when i'm on camera or i'm on instagram or i'm like speaking in a public format or like i'm literally just alone with a friend in like a room and we're just chatting like openly there's obviously certain boundaries and things that i wouldn't share on a public platform but i think because i'm trying to just have like the same consistency of character and like have the same personality across the board that it actually doesn't feel like it's so much of a stretch for me to share yeah. openly on a public platform i don't know really good. what about you no i agree i think like i mean in one sense it's easier because there's no reaction like as i'm talking to this camera the only rea reaction is <laughs> i'll read so all the like reactions us. in the comment section um yeah <laughs> But I would say like similarly, like anything that we would talk about here, I would probably be more vulnerable and open in a, in a conversation because I understand the parameters of that. I have no idea who's gonna watch this or like how that's gonna affect them. It's hard to explain everything like in a 12, 20 minute video, whatever it is. Yeah. But in a conversation, as long as you're like a humble person, you can have feedback and conversation and be like, well, I don't think that you like, what do you mean by that? And like, you can't ask in a YouTube video, what do you mean by that? Right, you know? yeah. So. I think it is. You just get to say what you think and no one pushes back. <laughs> yeah, but they do. Like, in terms of, like, if they don't like it, they won't watch it. Right, yeah. Or they'll say something in the comments. But, um, but yeah, I would say the same. I just try to be the same, like, everywhere else. I could put on a, a persona for this type of stuff. Or even, like, on the platform at church and stuff. But it's yeah. just, like, that doesn't really help yeah, anybody. Yeah, anybody. No, not you, not, not anybody useful. else. There are a lot more questions here that we could keep going through, but this video is already going to be pretty long to edit. And so I think we're going to wrap it up here. Max is also getting anxious and ready to drive again. You did such a good job, buddy. He's just He's been looking out fries. the window with a belly full of fries and belching. Don't like puke his mama. in the car, bud. Yeah, he'll be okay. Don't puke in the car. <laughs> but thank you guys for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you like it before you leave. I would love for you to do that. But also make sure that you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any future videos like this. Jared is back in lots of them. We're just hanging out, doing life on here, and we would love to invite you guys into that. And so subscribe so you don't miss out on anything else. And also, I'll add this to the end as well. As I said in the beginning, follow on Instagram if you don't want to miss any opportunities to be a part of videos like this. It's always super fun when we can include you guys and show you the content that you actually want to see. So lots of different things that you can do coming out of here, but I hope that you guys have a great week. And until the next video, love you, praying for for you and we will see you soon. Ribadurchi. So see you. Hi, he's waving. <laughs>